Good morning, Internet. This is the Largely Catechized Life, where we take a look at Luther's large catechism. And this morning, we're picking up where we left off last week in the Lord's Prayer with forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And with this, as well as, well, kind of all prayer, um, we try and measure the usefulness of prayer by us praying rather than by God giving. And so we take this petition, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we love to put the whole thing on our own shoulders and say, you know, if I don't pray, God forgive me, well then he's not going to. Unless I ask, he won't do it. And unless I forgive other people, he won't forgive me. And what I really need to do then is put the whole burden of that on my shoulders by making it in me not being angry anymore, rather than Jesus dying on a cross for my neighbor every bit as much as for myself. But here's the thing. Your sins are forgiven because Jesus died on a cross for you. Your neighbor's sins are forgiven because Jesus died on a cross for them. All of this depends on the fact that God is merciful towards sinners. If you want to put the whole thing on yourself, there's nothing but doubt. There's nothing but burden. There's no hope at all. And here's the thing. The scriptures tell us that if Christ was not crucified and risen, your faith is in vain and you are still in your sins, no matter how many times you have asked God to forgive you and how many times you have said, I forgive my neighbor. But on the other hand, if Jesus died a long time before you ever thought to ask him for forgiveness, if he died even for his enemies who wanted nothing to do with him, if he died for all the world, then there can be mercy for you and even for the neighbor who hurt you so badly. We are not forgiven because we prayed, but because Christ died. We are taught to pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, to recognize the source of this forgiveness. But, (laughs) because I am a poor, miserable sinner and, you know, lazy, uh, I gotta ask, if Christ already forgave it, why do I gotta waste time praying? And again, I try to make the whole thing about my work my praying. And so I say, you know, with all prayer, you have to really, really mean it in your heart. You have to do it a lot, like without ceasing a lot. And we have turned all of these things um, into burdens when prayer was always given as a gift. Because honestly, we don't really mean it sometimes. We are still angry with our neighbor. We don't pray enough, definitely not without ceasing. But oddly enough, um, as with the rest of the Lord's Prayer, God's name is still hallowed, his kingdom does still come, his will is still done, and we do still receive our daily bread, despite the fact that we are sinners who don't pray enough. Because none of this stands on you. It all stands on God, and it's all given for you. So how much more so with your forgiveness upon when the whole source of your forgiveness is the cross of Christ? I mean, because in in all of the places where I am not enough and don't do enough and don't feel enough, one thing is steady, the cross of Christ, where God died for sinners like me. How can you not praying enough uncrucify Jesus? How can you not praying enough put him back in that tomb? But we still try and make the whole thing about us and pray as if we can somehow outdo that cross. So Jesus can speak from that cross to sinners like me and say, it is finished. And I'm like, no, it's not. I got to ask a lot and I got to really mean it. And I got to prove that I really mean it by doing something and prove that I really have it by not being mad or hurt by sin, which by its definition hurts and makes God angry. We make this thing into such a burden. But this was a given as a gift that we really, really need. In the large catechism, Luther writes, For since the flesh in which we daily live is of such a nature that it neither trusts nor believes God and is ever active in evil lusts and deceives, so that we sin daily in word and deed by commission and omission by which the conscience is thrown into unrest so that it is afraid of the wrath and displeasure of God and thus loses the comfort and confidence derived from the gospel. Therefore, it is ceaselessly necessary that we run hither and obtain the consolation to comfort the conscience again. Prayer is about comfort. Prayer is not a magic spell or a magic formula. This isn't a, if you don't ask, he won't give. He gave you forgiveness in your baptism. He taught you to pray before you even knew that you needed it because he knew that you did and more. He knew that you would need comfort because it is dark down here. We don't have to lie about that anymore and pretend that things are fine. We are awful, awful sinners. And we don't have to lie about that either. Ignore problems or write them off or blame everyone around us. Instead, we can find comfort. Even as we are taught to pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. God would fix our eyes upon the place where he already did. 
Jesus died for you. And when you are struggling to forgive your neighbor, he points you to the fact that he died for them too. Forgiveness was won upon the cross, no matter how your heart happens to feel about it, that you might actually find comfort because your heart is in such unrest. God gives us this petition that we would fix our eyes on Jesus and in all things with prayer. Find comfort.